glassblowing has been around since the height of the Roman Empire. It was around that time when people discovered that molten glass could be inflated by blowing into a hollow tube and shaped by the human touch. There are many different techniques that glass blowers use to form vessels and decorative pieces, but for 2,000 years, the base techniques have remained relatively unchanged. It all begins with glass that is melted in a furnace at over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass emerges as a pliable gob dangling precariously from the end of a scalding hot blowpipe. Once the gob is secured, the other end of the five-foot steel or iron pipe is cooled in a barrel of water and the glass blower can set to handling and shaping the delicate mass. The glass blower blows into the pipe to begin forming a bubble in the glass, all the while keeping the pipe rotating. More layers of glass can be added with a gathering iron or by tipping the pipe back into the furnace. The shaping of the glass often begins with nothing more than a wet newspaper between the glass blower's bare hands and the 2000 degree molten mass. It's a race against gravity and time, as the artist must keep the pipe spinning continuously or risk ruining the fragile creation. The glass blower also employs several tools to help shape and smooth the glass while rolling it across a flat steel surface called a marva. Patterns and colours can be added to the creation by rolling the molten glass in powdered colour or in larger pieces of coloured glass called frit. The process continues again and again, with this series of gathering, inflating and shaping until the artist's vision has been achieved. After the vessel is formed to the desired shape and colour, it's placed in a kiln that allows the glass to cool down slowly over 24 hours, keeping it from cracking under thermal stress. Once cooled, the glass can be ground, polished, engraved and detailed further. Susie Perrette of Ventura Hot Glass talks to us about this art form that's become her life's work and passion. For one, I don't like to carry on a big conversation while I'm working because I have to count. I have to know what's going on. Seconds make a difference and it's so dynamic that I have to have almost pure concentration. And I can't be thinking about what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I have to think about the piece right there in front of me. So it is very... Um, so that's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about that glass. We're thinking about what's it going to do next. How's it going to come off the pipe? You know, how's it going to burn us? How is it responding to the shape and the design and everything else? Um, we really came down slowly overnight. It still has a sharp point where we've dinged it off the pipe, but we can take that out, and sometimes it's really hot. But I'll take them back into the house, and then I'll just sit down and look at each one because I want to understand the story that I've created. I've put all the ingredients together, all of the things that it makes to make a beautiful garden of ID. 